In this video from Learn Electrics, we will look at the type and style of questions that you might have in a 2391 inspection and test exam. More specifically, we will be looking at the scenario type questions. Although intended for the inspection and test exams, this video is also good practice for other electrical exams where all learning is good learning. Scenario type questions will often come up in 2391 style exams. A scenario will be described to you with all the information that you need to be able to answer the questions that follow. You may need to consult the wiring regulations, the on-site guide or guidance note 3, so make sure that you have the latest editions of these books and, most importantly, you know how to use them. There will usually be four or five questions on that particular scenario. The beginning of the scenario will tell you. You will have four possible answers to choose from for each question. Choose the most appropriate answer. That is important. The most appropriate answer. Some answer choices might look right, but they don't relate to the actual question. There will only be one answer that fulfills what the question is asking. Let's look at a typical scenario. A low ohms continuity test of the CPC is to be carried out on a radial lighting circuit protected by a 6 amp circuit breaker. There is one lamp controlled by a 3 plate 2 way switching arrangement. The circuit is wired in thermoplastic flat profile 70 degrees Celsius PVC cable with 1.5 by 1 millimeter copper conductors. The circuit dimensions are as follows. From the consumer unit to the ceiling rows, 20 meters. From the ceiling rows to the first switch, 4 meters. And between the two way switches, 5 meters. Assume the testing is carried out at normal ambient temperatures, which we acknowledge as 20 degrees Celsius. Safe isolation and lock off has been carried out correctly, and the circuit is dead ready for testing. The question will often set a scenario just using words, but I find it is sometimes easier to visualize the scenario as a drawing. So draw it. It doesn't have to be perfect, just a quick sketch that tells you to understand. Sketch the circuit using the information from the scenario setting. Don't worry about what it looks like. This is not an art exam. Do you understand it? Is it an accurate sketch of the scenario? And this sketch took me all of 15 seconds and is enough for what I need. Put in any information that helps. Cable lengths will be important in some of the questions. There will usually be four or five questions on the scenario, but because this video is about exam help and practice, we have 10 questions for you. Pause the video at each question and attempt the question yourself. The slides that follow the question will give you the answers and reasons along with any calculations. Starting with question 1, this question will ask about the CPC and we should remember that the CPC or circuit protective conductor is the proper name for that bare conductor with green and yellow sleeving. It is still referred to as the earth by some and many manufacturers will mark their accessories with E for earth. Just something to be aware of. The question asks, what is the purpose of carrying out a CPC continuity test? And then there are four possible answers, A to D in this case. We should choose the most appropriate answer for the actual question. Sometimes you may find that two questions seem to fit but which one answers what the question is asking? I've included the sketch that we made of the scenario to help you. Pause the video and attempt an answer yourself. And the next slide will show you the answer. The correct answer is B. We want to prove that the CPC is present at each point in the circuit. The CPC should, indeed, be available at all points in the circuit. Some switches and luminaires may not need a CPC because of their type of construction, but the CPC must be present 
in each of these accessories and items, and the CPC must be continuous. Any future changes to the lighting circuit might mean that a CPC is now required. The customer shouldn't expect the house to be rewired just because you didn't supply a CPC when you installed that new lighting circuit. The CPC should be provided even if not used at the moment. On to question two now, the same scenario. The question asks, which of the following must we do to the circuit at the consumer unit in order to carry out a CPC continuity test? Pause the video and choose an answer. The correct answer is answer C. We must link the line and CPC conductors together at the consumer unit. The line conductor is the little R1 resistance. The CPC is the little R2 value. Added together, for a radial circuit, little r1 plus little r2 equals big r1 plus r2. By linking line and CPC, we can test r1 plus r2 at all points on the circuit, recording the highest reading as the r1 plus r2 for the circuit. Big r1 plus r2 is an expression that stays together. We cannot have big r1 on its own, or big r2 on its own. They don't exist as numbers. The number is big R1 plus R2. Little R1 is a number on its own, and so is little R2, and they can be added together. The resistance of the line is little R1, and the CPC resistance is little R2. We test along the brown wire, or little R1, through the link, and back to the test meter on the green and yellow wire, little R2. Question 3 is next. We are asked which conductors are being tested with an R1 plus R2 test. Again, pause the video and find the answer. The answer is B. We are testing the line and CPC conductors. Line and CPC are linked at one end, and the low ohm's continuity is tested from relevant points. We are testing from the open end of the line conductor all the way to the consumer unit through the link and then back along the CPC conductor. If the path is continuous, a reading will be displayed on the test meter. And so to question number four. For some questions, you might want a little more detail. If you do, redraw it. Whatever helps you to understand and choose the right answers. Put in as much detail as you need, but be conscious of the time taken in an exam. The clock will not stop whilst you create your masterpiece, so work quickly if you need to make another drawing. So back to question number four. What is the expected ohms result between the live loop terminal and the CPC terminal when measured at the ceiling rows with both light switches in the off position? Pause the video and find the correct answer. This is part of table B1 in guidance note 3, and it will show you the milliohms per meter value of R1 plus R2 for different cables. The scenario tells us that the conductors are copper, the line is 1.5 millimeter, and the CPC is 1 millimeter. Find the line in the table that shows 1.5 and 1. This shows that the resistance of these two conductors in series with each other, down the line, through the link, and back on the CPC, is 30.2 milliohms of resistance for every meter in length. This requires an easy calculation, and you'll need to use the data that you've gathered from either table B1 in guidance note 3, or table I1 in the on-site guide. For a radial circuit, R1 plus R2 can be found by multiplying the circuit length by the milliohms per meter value for the cable as found in the tables, and then dividing that answer by 1000 to find the ohms. The circuit length specified in the question is 20 meters, and we only count this one way, from the ceiling rows to the consumer unit, 
we do not count the return length. This has been allowed for in tables B1 and I1. The tables give us a resistance value of 30.2 milliohms per meter. Here is the equation. 20 multiplied by 30.2 and divided by 1000. Our answer is 0 0.604 ohms. We can round this up to two decimal places and we have 0 0.61 ohms. This is our answer and we should choose answer C. Next is question 5. You may need to use the detailed sketches that we made for this one. What is the expected ohms result between the common terminal and the CPC terminal when measured at the furthest switch with the light switches in the on position? This is going to be the longest length of circuit wiring and the test meter readings at the switches will be bigger than the readings measured at the ceiling rows. There is more copper to go through. From the furthest switch, there is 5 meters plus 4 meters plus 20 meters, which equals 29 meters of twin and earth cable. 30.2 milliohms per meter is still valid for the cable, and all that we must do now is to put the numbers into the calculator. R1 plus R2 is equal to 29 multiplied by 30.2 and all divided by 1000. This gives us 0 0.8758 ohms, which can be rounded up to 0 0.88 ohms. The correct answer then is answer A, 0 0.88 ohms. If this is the biggest R1 plus R2 for this circuit, then we should record this on the schedule of test results. And now to question 6. We are asked if a polarity test is carried out with the light switches in the off position, what reading would you expect between the switch terminal and the CPC terminal at the ceiling rows? Think about what you are testing between, between the switch terminal and the CPC with the switches off. The answer choice is D. The test meter will give a maximum ohms reading. Some meters will show this as 1999 ohms or 9999 ohms, whatever the maximum the meter can display. Others, like mine, will show it as OL or over limit. The reading is higher than the meter can display and the meter has effectively detected an open circuit. In the off position, there is no continuous path back to the consumer unit for the line, no link to go through and no return path along the CPC. This is where sketching a more detailed picture is useful, as we did earlier. Especially in practical exams, don't be fooled into automatically thinking that something is wrong, something is broken. At least flick one of the light switches first and retest. You will find that you now get a continuity reading. Nothing is broken, just the switch positions that needed changing. Question 7 is waiting for us now. Using what we know about conductor resistances, have a go at this one. The actual R1 plus R2 tests, when measured, are much higher than expected. From the choices offered, what is the most likely cause? And we've been given four choices. Pause the video, read each possible answer, and then choose the appropriate answer. Answer C is the only choice that will fit what this question is asking. This question is assuming that there is nothing wrong with the circuit installation. It is fault free. The only answer that makes sense is answer C. A longer circuit length will increase the total resistance of the circuit. If the calculations are made correctly and the test meter readings are correct, then the conductor lengths must be longer than those shown on the drawings. A shorter circuit will have less length and a corresponding reduction in resistance. A loose neutral will not affect this question as the neutral is not being tested. And an increase in cable size or CSA 
will reduce the resistance as these are now thicker conductors. Question 8, an essential to know. The R1 plus R2 test results can be used to calculate the earth fault loop impedance by using which formula? There is now a choice of formulas. Only one will answer the question. Pause the video and answer the question. The answer is A. Earth fault loop impedance, or ZS, is equal to ZE plus R1 plus R2. This is one of those must-know formulas, something you will be able to recall without thinking. The highest R1 plus R2 value will be recorded on the schedule of test results and may be used later to calculate the earth fault loop impedance or ZS of the circuit. ZS will be found by adding together ZE and R1 plus R2. R1 plus R2 are sometimes shown in brackets to indicate that they are to be kept together. We do not separate them into R1 and R2, they do not exist on their own. Now we can look at question number 9. The question tells us that a low ohms test is carried out between the CPC and the live loop terminals at the ceiling rows, with the CPC and line conductor linked at the consumer unit. The following test results were obtained. With switch 1 turned on, we had 0 0.62 ohms. With switch 1 turned off, we also have 0 0.62 ohms. Again, follow any sketches that you may have made. If you can trace the wiring through from the live loop terminal all the way through the circuit and back to the earth terminal, you may find this helps to answer this question. The correct answer is C. The live loop and CPC readings are not switch dependent. Live loop is connected directly to the 6 amp breaker in the consumer unit and does not pass through any switches. And the CPC is unswitched throughout its length. The two conductors are connected by a link at the consumer unit. The switches will therefore have no effect on the test results. This test will always return a continuity reading if the conductors are undamaged. And finally, question 10. As we said, don't expect this many questions on one scenario in an exam. This is just practice to make you more proficient. Expect four, perhaps five questions. We are asked, in order to carry out an R1 plus RN test, the link at the consumer unit should be something. And then the usual four choices of answer. Pause the video and then find the answer on the next slide. You should have answer B. The link should be positioned between the line and neutral conductors. The link must be between the two conductors under test. Remember, R1 is the line conductor, R2 the CPC conductor, RN the neutral conductor. This means that R1 plus R2 is line and CPC, R1 plus RN is line and neutral, and RN plus R2 is neutral and CPC. And that's it for 2391 scenarios for this video. Expect more in the near future. We hope that you've enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.